Thank you very much. Again, y'all, my name is Kenneth. I'm a grateful recovered alcoholic. Thank you. And the first, what, first thing I want to do is thank God for my sobriety because I'm not stupid enough or dumb enough to think I'm sober on my own power. Second, I want to give credit and thanks to the first 100 men who wrote the textbook of Alcoholics Anonymous because they wrote one of the greatest literary masterpieces of the 20th century. It's not just my opinion, it's a fact. Uh, to my sponsor, who took me to the 12 steps, to this fellowship, uh, I, I'm indebted to everybody that I just met. You know, so I'm a part of that. Uh, this workshop, on the flyer, what it says is, a few simple rules for a self-imposed crisis. A few simple rules for a self-imposed crisis. The first thing we want to do is look at what got us to this point. Right here, I put up illness, the word illness. Then I got the word ill under that. And crisis under that. In order to understand what we're really dealing with, I don't know if some people have heard people say, I wasn't a bad person. I'm a, I was a sick person trying to get well. Any of y'all ever heard that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, a half truth equals a whole lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's, that's, that's true. Yeah. See, nowhere in the big book does it tell us that. You know, I'll, I'll greatly underestimate this illness that I have if I do. Because the word illness, as it's written up there, this is the meaning of the word illness. That's why I put it up there so we can look at that word. This is the meaning of it. When you look it up in the dictionary, Wickedness, unpleasantness, an unhealthy condition of mind and body. It comes from the word ill, I-L-L, -L, which means immoral, vicious, resulting from, indicative of, or accompanied by an evil or malevolent intention. Causing suffering or distress. Not normal or sound. Involving difficulty. Worse, W-R-S-E. And worse, W-R-S-T. With displeasure or hostility. In a reprehensible manner. The reverse of good. Something that afflicts. Trouble. Some of y'all might be able to agree with some of those definitions, right? Because mm -hmm. oh, yeah. that's what some of us did. I can't say all of us. Mm -hmm. But all of, you know, the people who are afflicted and inflicted and afflicted my illness on didn't see me as a nice person trying to get well. Right. <laughs> y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah, they right. had some more terrible words for me than what I just described. Oh, yeah. And it was loaded with expletives. Y'all know what expletives is, right? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. Curse words. Yeah, cuss words. So, we're dealing with a self-imposed crisis. A few simple rules for a self-imposed crisis. Now, when we get to this word crisis, and looking it up in the dictionary, this would hit me. A time of intense difficulty, trouble, or danger. Synonyms, catastrophe, calamity, emergency, disaster. Two, a time when a difficult or important decision must be made. Critical point, decisive point, turning point. We have big books, pardon me, we have big books in 12 and 12 uh, in the back. So, you know, if you follow along with us, you, you, if you get a big book and a 12 and 12, you can easily see that what's being presented in most cases is coming from this book. Third 
clear definition of crisis. The turning point of a disease <coughs> when an important change takes place, indicating either recovery or death. That's the meaning of crisis. Now, when we turn our books to page... Can you say it again, please? I'm sorry. Can you so, repeat that last part? The third meaning of crisis? The third meaning of crisis? The turning point of a disease when an important change takes place, indicating either recovery or death. This is the point in my crisis when one or the other is going to take place and there ain't no middle of the road solution. It's going to either be recovery or death. I'm going to reach a point where, like the big book told us, we reached the point where we had but two alternatives. One was to go on to the bitter end, and the other one was to accept spiritual help. Two alternatives. Alternatives, not choices. Alternatives. By not choosing one, I automatically choose the other. That's, right. that's, the, that's where the point, the, this, 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 uh, this crisis has, that's where I've come to a crisis in my development. So it's a few simple rules for a self-imposed crisis. Now, if we turn to page 44 in the big book. Y'all got it? Mm -hmm. This is what it says. In the preceding chapter, you have learned something of alcoholism. We hope we have made clear the distinction between the alcoholic and the non-alcoholic. If, when you honestly want to, you find you cannot quit entirely, or if when drinking you have little control over the amount you take, you are probably alcoholic. If that be the case, you may be, you may be suffering from an illness which only a spiritual experience will conquer. This word conquer that they use, which only a spiritual experience will conquer. <clears throat> now, those of us that have been here a minute, we know that the, the, the big book itself said that we have written a book which we believe to be moral as well as spiritual. Y'all have read that? Mm -hmm. So that means that what they say, the physical words that they are using carry spiritual connotations because we've written a book which we believe to be moral as well as spiritual so they are giving us physical descriptions of spiritual realities that's what they're doing throughout the textbook of alcoholics and Anonymous. so this word conquer it means to either overthrow defeat Overcome a problem or, or, or win a war, conquer, right? Y'all heard about conquer, the conquering hero. So, can I hear the definitions again, please? We'll, we, will, we will definitely get back to that. But let me, make, let me, let, let me get this plan and I'm going to have all the definitions for you because I got them written down. Okay. I have them written down. I'm going to give them to you. Right. I have them written down. You ain't going to lose nothing on this. <laughs> So this word conquer, we're dealing with a spiritual illness, which uh, 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 an illness which only a spiritual experience will conquer. The first word of the big book, the very first word of the big book on page one is war. War. That's the first word of the big book, war. That's telling me that I'm getting ready to go and involve myself in a spiritual warfare against not an outside enemy. Because this crisis is a self-imposed crisis, right? <laughs> so I'm not dealing, this is a different kind of crisis. 
than ordinary crises, you know, which brings us to another point. I remember a long time ago, I used to go to different religious places, <laughs> and people told me that there was a war in heaven. I don't know if y'all remember this, but they, used, they told me that a long time ago. And believe it or not, the principles we have are borrowed from religion and medicine. Even though we don't preach no specific religion, the principles we have is borrowed from religion and medicine. So back in religion a long time ago, they told me that there was a war in heaven. It said the devil and his angels fought, and Michael and his angels fought, and the devil was cast down and put out. But the devil didn't go down by himself. He brought a third of the heaven down with him. Y'all ever, ever remember? Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I used to hear that a lot, right? And uh, I'm imagining in my head somebody throwing lightning bolts and a man with a pitchfork up there fighting and his little demons with horns up there and they got a big struggle going on, right? A big war. That, that's how I imagined it in my mind, right? Because mm -hmm. I was young, I didn't know. <laughs> so, when I turn the page, I think it's 18 in the big book. Want to make sure I got the, the right page. Remember, we're dealing with a self-imposed crisis, right? Mm -hmm. And then we suffer from an illness, and we know the definition of illness now. On page 18, an illness of this sort, and we have come to believe it an illness, involves those about us in a way no other human sickness can. If a person has cancer, all are sorry for him, and no one is angry or hurt. But not so with the alcoholic illness. For with it, there goes annihilation of all things worthwhile in life. It engulfs all whose lives touch the <coughs> sufferers. It brings misunderstanding, fierce resentment, financial insecurity, disgusted friends and employers, warped lives of blameless children, sad wives and parents. Anyone can re increase the list. Don't that sound like me taking a third of the heaven down with me? Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't, <laughs> he, he, didn't, he didn't get go down by himself, right? He brought down a third. I'm, my illness, this illness I got, I'm bringing everything that I touch and I'm affecting everybody, destroying all their lives too. Now y'all can see the correlation in what I just said? Yes. So nobody don't want to start getting spooky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want nobody to get spooky. <laughs> now this illness, and we, we talked about the, uh, the first word in the big book is war. Mm -hmm. Then we talk about, uh, we mentioned some word. Conquer. 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 Mm -hmm. And the big book uses words like ready. Ready. If you want what we have and are willing to go to any let to get it, then you are ready to take certain steps, right? Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, my creator, I'm not, I'm now willing that you should have all of me, right? Yes. I'm ready. We're entirely ready to have God remove these defects of character, right? Mm -hmm. But the word ready, we hear that word so much we never look it up mm -hmm. in the context with which they're talking about. The word ready means to be prepared for use or for action. As in a combat ready soldier. Y'all heard? Mm -hmm. To be prepared for war. That's one of the meanings of it. Y'all see how this big book is tying in? That it's going to hit that definition with the people who have religion. And it's going to hit the definition with the people who don't have religion. Right. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to... The people who don't have no religious concept going to see it as, I'm just ready. Mm -hmm. The people with the religious concept going to say, well, as ready means as in a combat ready soldier. Because we used to sing songs a long time ago talking about we are soldiers in... Y'all remember that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm having to stay on this battlefield until I die, right? Mm -hmm. They told me 
is a lifelong process, right? Once I come in here, I don't go out. That's what they told me a long time ago, right? So we talk about an illness that's a spiritual illness that we need a few simple rules because this person that's around here talking about, I wasn't a bad person. I was just a sick person trying to get well. Like I said in the beginning, a half a truth is a whole lie. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I, that's one of the reasons why I had to take, to show y'all when it, what's, what's happening here, I had to take in one of the rules that we've been given, a certain and fearless moral inventory, right? Mm -hmm. Moral means good and bad. Mm -hmm. So how can I say I wasn't bad when every resentment I had go wind up in me being selfish, dishonest, <laughs> self-seeking, inconsiderate, or afraid? Mm -hmm. Right or wrong? Right. Right. So you know, uh, everyone, I mean every resentment I had, I had, and if, if some sponsors tell people, well, you didn't play no part in that. You, you were such and such years old. You couldn't have no part in that at all. Now, you know, for instance, if I'm molested, I'm five years old, right? Well, my cousin, my cousin molest, molest me at five years old. It affects everything, my sex uh, relation, my personal relation, my self-esteem, my, my security, it affects everything. My pride and everything. Right or wrong? Right, right, right. So now that I can say what well, I'm affected, where am I at fault? Five years old at the time. The sponsor says, the ignorant sponsor, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't play any part in that. Well, the big book never asked me what part I played, right? The book says, where was I wrong? Where was I at fault? You know, what, where was I to blame? It never mentions the part. Because if I only get a part and claim a part in it, by the time I get to step nine, what I'm going to say is, when I'm making amends, yeah, I did that. But I wouldn't have did it if you wouldn't have done that. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so when I'm claiming a part, I'm partializing my recovery. I had to dismiss the other person that was involved entirely, completely. And when I get to that part, that person don't exist. So who the only one standing in that column? Me. Where was I at fault? I had to find where I was dishonest. Well, Kenny, how were you dishonest? Because I didn't tell nobody. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. It happened more than once. Wow. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. They got two kinds of lies. Wow. The lie of commission <laughs> and the lie of omission. And the lie of omission is worse than the lie of commission. Yes, I was in fear because mm -hmm. I didn't want nobody to know. Mm -hmm. Especially when I was in prison. I sure ain't want them to know about it. <clears throat> Y'all understand what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Because when I went to prison, <coughs> as an adult, for the first time, I was 17 years old, a good looking boy, and they were singing songs like Ain't No Joy, like a brown butt boy. That's what they were singing. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what they were singing. So, uh, you know, the book, the book said we were mad, right? <laughs> you know. But, I, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm still remembering what happened way back when, right? But another part where I had to find out where I was at fault was I was inconsiderate. person said, well, how can you be inconsiderate? Because I'm inconsiderate of the fact that the person who did this to me had to be sick. Y'all heard me? Yeah. But I'm not thinking about his sickness. I only think about how I was affected. That's right. Y'all heard what I said? Yes. Yeah. So I had to find where I was at fault. And if I don't do that, I'll never let go of that design. That's right. That person can walk 
into this door right now. I can walk up and give him a hug. Uh -huh. Whereas before, I laid at his house waiting for him to come home with a 38 and a 32. <laughs> I'm talking about pistols. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I had to relieve, relieve myself of this resentment. So let's get back to where we were at. This person, one who's suffering from an illness, because the people who didn't hear the definition of illness still don't, wasn't in here, didn't hear the definition of illness. So I'm going to repeat that then, and I still have it for you anyway. All right. So this is the definition of illness again for people who came in late. And I say this because they got some people who be saying, I wasn't bad. I was just a sick person trying to get well. And I'm going to repeat it. A half truth equals a whole lie. I'm going to say that again. This word illness, the spiritual illness that we suffer from, this is the meaning of it. Wickedness, unpleasantness, and unhealthy condition of mind and body. And when you look it up in a dictionary, you're going to find out I'm, 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 I'm right on time. It comes from the word ill, which means immoral, vicious, resulting from, indicative of, or accompanied by an evil or malevolent intention, causing suffering or distress, not normal or sound, involving difficulty, worse, W-R-S-E, and worse, W-R-S-T, with displeasure or hostility in a reprehensible manner. The reverse of good, something that afflicts trouble. One of the meanings is in a reprehensible manner. Y'all ever heard a long time ago where one book said that he gave them over to a reprobate mind? Yeah. Because they chose to worship the creation instead of the creator. Mm -hmm. So and here I am worshiping self. And remember they had war, remember? And this enemy took down a third of the heavens with him. Just like my illness don't affect only me. It brings down and engulfs the lives of everybody who I'm around. So how am I behind about I wasn't bad. <laughs> no, I was terrible. You know, <laughs> you know, this is the reality. I'm asking the whole question. Remember the question, but hold it. Because it's so much to present that I want to present what we present because this meeting is not confined to just here. Other people is going to get to, can we record these, uh, these, uh, what you call them? Yeah, oh, these, sure. these sessions. Sure. We record them on CD. And after the next month, anybody can come up there and pick them up. Okay. So, I explained that to explain to the people who didn't hear the definition of that word illness. Which brought us to a crisis. Yeah. A self-imposed crisis. See, a, a tornado, a hurricane, a tsunami, Earthquake, floods, and stuff, all crises, right? Yes. But this crisis is a self-imposed crisis. And we don't want no person who suffering from all of these definitions running around loose in a society. <laughs> Especially because his illness gets worse and never better, right? We don't, we, we, he want to lock this son of a gun up. Oh, we're going to give them a few simple rules. That's right. And one of the rules takes place on page. What page is this? 77 in the 12 and 12. Page 77 in the 12 and 12. This one of the rules. Y'all got it? Yeah. Steps 8 and 9 are concerned with personal relations. First, we take a look backward and try to discover where we have been at fault. Next, we make a vigorous attempt to repair the damage we have done. And third, having thus cleaned away the debris of the past, we consider how with our newfound knowledge of ourselves, we may develop the best possible relations with every human being we know. This is a very large order. 
It is a task which we may perform with increasing skill, but never really finish. Learning how to live in the greatest peace, partnership, and brotherhood with all men and women of whatever description is a moving and fascinating adventure. Every AA has found that he can make little headway in his new adventure of living until he first backtracks and really makes an accurate and unspare survey of the human wreckage he had left in his way. Mm. Didn't they tell us that the alcoholic like a tornado roaring his way through the lives of people? That's, right. That's not a, uh, uh, a sick person trying to get well. He's a destructive force. <laughs> then he comes up here with that attitude. When he come up here, he like the man that come up out the storm cell talking about ain't it grandma or the, 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 the wind stopped blowing. Y'all yeah. remember that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so when I got that attitude, that's the attitude. I come up here, I'm sober, and I'm thinking everybody's supposed to start treating me all right. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I've been clean 30 days. Y'all still treat me like I'm used. You still hide your pocketbook. All this kind of stuff. Anyway, that's one of the rules. That's on uh, step eight. We talk about a few simple rules. On page 74. In the big book. This is another rule that sometimes we just completely overlook. What page I told y'all? 74. 74. This is a hard rule, y'all. And see in the, in the middle of the page where you see such parts of our story? Right at the, in the middle of the page. Such parts of our story we tell to someone who will understand yet be unaffected. The rule is we must be hard on ourselves, but always considerate of others. Y'all ever heard of that? Yeah. Wow. Well, some people up, up in here don't be talking about, just beat yourself with a feather. <laughs> Y'all heard it? <laughs> That's what some people say. The rule is that, see, self is so dangerous that I can't just like this. Spank him or tap him with a feather. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. We must always, we, those of us who have recovered, we must always be hard on ourselves, but always considerate of others. Another rule on page 62. On page 62. In the big book. <laughs> Y'all got it? Uh -huh. yes. See the last paragraph? Mm -hmm. This is the how and why of it. Yeah. First of all, we had to quit playing God. Y'all yeah. yeah. heard that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Running my life on self-will is a form of playing God. Mm -hmm. yep. Living by self propulsion is a form <laughs> of playing God. Want to run the whole show is another form of playing God, ain't it? Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to have to quit playing God. And the big book mentions something about the devil. I think it's on page 11. For people who really don't know, we borrowed these principles from religion and medicine, right? So on page 11, this is what I think Bill said. Yeah. He said, the wars, on page 11, y'all got that? Which had been fought, the burnings and the chicanery that religious dispute had facilitated made me sick. I honestly doubted whether on balance the religions of mankind had done any good. Judging from what I had seen in Europe and since, the power of God in human affairs was negligible. The brotherhood of man of grim jest. If there was a devil, he seemed the boss universal, and he certainly had me. See, he's talking about the devil in this part. We talk about God in another part. The thing, the difference in, even though we borrowed principles from religion and medicine, in religion, 
Most people were brought up in some type of religion. The books that they gave us, most of the holy books, always dealt with personalities. It was always dealing with personalities. The big book does not deal with personalities. The textbook of Alcoholics Anonymous, matter of fact, God is the first person to practice anonymity in the big book because he has no name. Nowhere has God given a name in the big book. So we're dealing with principles rather than personalities. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. They are, you, if, if, if it's God and the devil, then all of the personalities that I've been given all my life, like K and A, that's personality, right or wrong? Adam and uh, uh, Satan, personality, right? <coughs> Moses and Pharaoh, personalities. Jesus and the chief priest, personalities. Elijah and Ahab, personality. Samson and Delilah, personality. Elisha and Jezebel, personality. David and Goliath, personality. Right or wrong? Right. Jonah and Nineveh, personality. Nona, uh, 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 Jonah and Nineveh and uh, uh, Noah and his people, personality. The big book discarded all of the personalities and gave us the principles for which the personality stands. Y'all following that? Yes. <laughs> In other words, how many people heard of Jonah and the whale? Everybody. Yeah. God told Jonah to go this way, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Jonah decided he go in that way, yeah. right? Yeah. And he wound up in a whale, <laughs> right? And so, when I dismiss the personality and I look at what happens to me when I do opposite of what God wants me to do, don't I wind up in a whale of trouble? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Then the big book tell us that the first thing we got to do is quit playing God? I don't have to attribute that to Satan. I can look at myself. Y'all heard me? Yes. Because this world, all, this, all, this has been my trust. The big book showed me how to take that and put it into proper context and stop uh, looking at something that's way beyond, like I'm watching a movie scene with a war going on and all that. No, uh -uh. I had to look at self who exalted myself above everything that's called God and I sit in the place of God showing myself as God. That's what I did. That's why the book says, and I'm not the only one. The big book says, didn't, the big book didn't say, Kenneth had to quit playing God. He said the first thing we had, we had to do was quit playing God. Right? And those of us who sponsor people, these workshops help us because a lot of people come up here under religious uh, dictation. <laughs> <laughs> and religion and be showing us so much of their book. Y'all hear me? Yes. But I had that book all my life. Yeah. I read the Bible twice before I even went to school. I taught my older brother his ABCs. I had scriptural knowledge long before I came into Alcoholics Anonymous and was smoking with it. <laughs> and drinking with it. Y'all wind up in all kinds of penitentiaries with it. <laughs> I did. I, I, I've been in so many different prisons. I've seen so many different things. I've seen people come in prison. And 30 days after they come into the prison, they walk around talking about, I've been called. <laughs> <laughs> That's the yeah. And 30, you know, 30 days after they come into the prison. Yeah. And then... You watch them, and then they roll out. The people tell them, roll out. Y'all know what roll out means? Time to leave. It's time for you to pack yourself. You got to go. And they leave. And as soon as they get out, they hear another voice calling them. <laughs> <laughs> Louder than that voice that called them when they were in prison. Yeah. <laughs> Then they off the races again yeah. after being highly called. <laughs> <laughs> and then that same person, because I done seen this, six months later, he come back in prison. <laughs> and 30 days later, he walking around talking about, I've been called. Y'all <laughs> 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 hear me? Yes. It's an ever revolving cycle, a vicious cycle we caught up in. That's what we call it. And the book calls it an ever, I mean, a vicious cycle. This behavior is repeated over and over and over. And unless this person can uh, uh, experience an entire psychic change, there's very little hope for this. That was the book that told us. So, one of the uh, rules is that we're dealing with spiritual, a spiritual illness, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to need a spiritual experience to conquer this spiritual illness. I associate that with this old saying that we don't, I understand what Bill and I'm talking about. I really do. Because they told us, the ones that are coming up here with religion, they told us long time ago, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against powers and principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. Didn't they tell us that? Yes. Right. The big book saying the same thing in different words. It said, being convinced that self manifested in various ways is what had defeated us. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Self manifested in various ways is, boy, that's a statement. See, you got to remember who the big book was written for. The big book wasn't written for blacks. Oh, uh, the average person. I'm talking about eating cocaine. The big book was written in the beginning for rich cocaine folks. <laughs> so the knowledge that's in it is, is carrying great, great weight. See, the average person that got knowledge don't read like we read. When, when they say being convinced that self manifested in various ways is what it defeated us. 
The average person who got knowledge, those who have knowledge, when they read that and they go back and read their scripture, what they're reading is this. Every personality conflict in the book is a form of self-will as opposed to God's will. Moses and Pharaoh. Pharaoh involved in self-will. Moses, God's will, right? Yeah. Jesus is involved in God's will. The chief priest is self-will, right? Yeah. David and Goliath, self-will opposed to God's will. Self manifests itself in various ways all throughout the book. In various ways, physical descriptions of spiritual reality. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We're going we're gonna to have people that we work with. And people going to come and we need to be able to help them to better understand their own book. <coughs> That's the great thing about Alcoholics Anonymous. Alcoholics Anonymous will take a Christian and make him a better Christian. Mm -hmm. It will take a Jew and make him a better Jew. Mm -hmm. It will take a Muslim and make him a better Muslim. Mm -hmm. It will take a Buddhist and make him a better Buddhist. Mm -hmm. It will take a Protestant and make him a better Protestant. It will take an atheist and make him a better atheist. It will make a, it will take an agnostic and make him a better agnostic. And some people shrivel up. When I say that it'll take an agnostic and an atheist and make him a better agnostic and atheist. Don't never underestimate the atheist and the agnostics. Mm -hmm. The agnostic and the atheist are some of the most intelligent people on this planet. Mm -hmm. If you listen to them long enough, they'll have you thinking they ain't got no God. <laughs> <laughs> we learn some of our greatest lessons from we agnostics. <laughs> the phrase, as we understood him, come from we agnostics. So, it'll take an agnostic and make him a better agnostic. Alcoholics Anonymous will take an atheist and make him a better atheist. I've worked with atheists, <laughs> taking atheists through the steps. They weren't, uh, they weren't only atheists, they were also uh, anti-American. What's that word? They got a word for them. Uh, Supremacist? A word when you're always trying to overthrow the government. Uh, anarchists. Uh, anarchists. Oh, yeah. Hardcore anarchists. I went over, they asked me to come, because this is how I met Mike. They asked me to come over and share my Black Panther experience. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Because I was involved in that shootout they had in New Orleans. Y'all know I'm just way back in the 70s. Y'all might not remember that. Anyway, <laughs> I was all about power to the people and death to the pig. <laughs> so, when they found out about it, because I was working with one of them named Mike, he was an atheist, right? They asked me to come over and share my experience, right? So I went over there. And uh, I talked for about maybe 45 minutes in front of them. So when I finished talking, you know what they said? They said, well, let's, 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 what you think about opening up an AA group right here? They were very serious. And me, an AA group. I said, that's a good idea. I said, but the first thing got to be understood is, in the AA group, all this other stuff y'all talking about, we don't discuss none of that in the AA group. I said, then the first thing we're going to have to do is get every one of y'all to go through the steps. They was willing to do that. So we took all of them through the steps. Hardcore atheists. And once they all got through the steps, they start telling me about God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Even Mike. Yeah. Mike was a hardcore atheist. Told me, he, I mean, told me, even to when he got to step two. Uh, well, I'm willing to believe. I don't believe. But I'm, the book says I can be willing. I'm willing to believe that something greater than me. Yeah. That's what he told me. Hardcore. So, <laughs> now this boy is bringing other people to God. You know, to, to the step process. So, the, what we've been given is great, y'all. Great indeed. Now, I'm going to say a few more things because I had a whole lot to say. 
I'm going to have to really conclude what I, because I'm not, I'm not going to go beyond the time. I have a whole lot on this topic. I think we can do a part two on this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think we can do a part two because this is far from finished. Okay. I'm just beginning. You know, uh, this is what it says. <clears throat> I want to get to this point here. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shortcut this, all right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm almost time to go. It's all, almost time to go, so I'm, I'm gonna shortcut it and get to where I want to go at. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I just got to find out where that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, they got a religious, a thing called a religious view in the book. In the back of the book, all right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But before we get there, you got to realize that some people, some religious preachers, Jews, Christians, whatever, Muslims too, they don't want their people coming to alcoholics now. Y'all hear this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some, some of them were amazed by it, and some were encouraged, and some were and are dismayed and discouraged. And work hard at discrediting Alcoholics Anonymous and discouraging other people from being a part of it. But the book tells us this, that you'll find nothing here that's disturbing to your religious belief. Y'all read that? You, you'll find nothing here disturbing to your religious belief. By personal affiliation, we include Protestants, Catholics, Baptists, or Jews, Muslims, or sprinkling of them, and, and uh, all kinds of people. Y'all familiar with that, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm going further ahead because I'm looking, I'm looking at the clock. Say, as a matter of fact, you'll become a bright light in your congregation. Whenever the, 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 the member of the church comes to us and he goes to the steps and he goes back to the, to the church, he's not going to the church to get help. He's going there to help many a struggling priest. That's what the big book tells us, doesn't it? Yeah, he'll be, he'll be a bright spot in your congregation when you go back. So Alcoholics Anonymous is not against religion. The AA principles were mainly borrowed from the fields of religion and medicine. The truly, this is at the back of the book. They got one of the people who was coming on AA that they put in the back of the book, he said this. The truly Christian principle, not the cru truly Christian doctrine, the truly Christian principle that a man cannot help himself except by helping others. That's, right. mm -hmm. That's what a, 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 a respected priest said about, that's what the tactics that we uh, uh, use in alcoholic time. And he admitted he said, we operate by the truly Christian principle that a man cannot help himself except by helping others. When I'm going through trouble, storms, emotional storms, when I'm going through trials and temptation, when I'm going through death and frustration, when I'm going through separation or whatever I'm going through, and all else fails, what do they tell me to do? Work for the truly Christian principle that a man cannot help himself except by helping others is what we use on our this word religious they tell us in uh, I think it's in on page 19 in the big book they say of necessity there will have to be discussion of matters medical, psychiatric, social and religious. That's for some people who misunderstand what we're really saying and think this is a religious uh, uh, discussion when it's not. Y'all understand this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There have to be discussions of matters that medical, social, and religious. Some of us have been violently on page 15. Some of us have been vi violently anti-religious. That's on page 45 in the big book. On, in the 12 and 12 on page 166, they tell us this. Almost no recovery, almost no recovery from alcoholism has ever been brought about by the world's best professionals, whether medical or religious. 
Almost no recovery has ever been brought about by the world's best professionals, whether medical or religious. And they say almost, just in case somebody say, well, my daddy was drinking a lot, and uh, he went to the church, and uh, he stopped drinking. <laughs> they got people that's like that, right? Yeah. They say almost no recovery. See, and even with that, the person was drinking, but the booklet told us already, you got a hard drinker, a temperate drinker, a moderate drinker, a social drinker, but that real alcoholic <laughs> will be absolutely unable to stop. Right or wrong? Right. So, uh, so you know, that's what they, they gave us that leeway so they can we let them wiggle out of it. Okay, yeah, he was drinking and he went uh, to the to the place and he stopped drinking. Okay, we accept that. <laughs> we will, you know, but that, but that's what when they say almost none is almost like when Bill was asked the question about how it works. When they asked Bill if you had to change anything in how it works, what would you have changed? Y'all know what Bill said? No. He would have said, I would have changed that word rarely to never. <laughs> he would have said, never have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path. That's, that's from Bill's mouth. I, I, I said it with uh, Bill and them talking about too, way before the book. It, you know, they got an old saying. I don't know if y'all remember it, but it says, study to show yourself approved. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah. A workman uh, that need not be ashamed. You know, it need not be ashamed. Why? Because somebody told me you cross talk me when I'm talking bullshit. I mean, uh, uh, foolishness <laughs> to y'all. <laughs> y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yo, it, it, that's why we do big book studies. So that when the newcomer come to us, that's why it's important to go to Big Book Studies in 12 and 12 to prepare us in more understanding and effectiveness so we'll be able to answer him according to this book rather than out of our, our opinionated head. Y'all heard what I said? Right. We'll be able to answer that because, believe me, they'll start finding out things in Alcoholics Anonymous and then come back to the sponsor and say, the book didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Any of y'all had people come through that? Yes. They'll say the book, even I was corrected one time. <laughs> one time? <laughs> <laughs> one time. Yeah, one, one guy told me, you have people coming up with so many problems. <laughs> with so many problems. You know, they, uh, even the big book mentions that the, the meetings was designed to provide a time and a place where new people might bring their problems. Not old timers. Mm -hmm. You know, new people might bring their problems. The new man can come up and you say, uh, well, I got an issue, I'm going, I'm going through this and I'm going. Okay, we know. That's what he's going through. But we that's been around a minute, we have solutions, right? right. If, if, if no problem they can bring us that we can some of us ain't got no experience in none. They are in the, in the, uh, the principle we begin is so powerful. The 12 and 12 put it like this. Many people, non-alcoholic, non-alcoholic, report that as a, a result of AA's 12 steps, they have been able to overcome other difficulties of life. Non-alcoholics he's talking about. 15 years after Bill wrote the big book, he came with the 12 and 12, approximately 14 to 15 years. He wrote the 12 and 12, and he said that in it, many people, non-alcoholics, report that as a result of AA's 12 steps, they've been over the old, they have been able to overcome other difficulties of life. <coughs> Proof of that? Narcotics Anonymous got the 12 steps from us, right? Right. Bulimics Anonymous got the 12 steps from us, right? Right. Sex Anonymous got the 12 steps from us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Overeaters Anonymous yeah. got the 12 steps from us. Marijuana Anonymous, all kinds of Anonymous. Hundreds of anonymous have popped up using the 12 steps, right? right? So why would I have to go anywhere else when I have been introduced to the grandfather of them all? Right. I've been introduced to Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't need to take another 12-step program. I don't. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm 
personally not got with me. <laughs> anyway, we talking about principles. I'm going to tell you all this much and I'm going to get ready to close. We've been dealing with rules. And I have covered all the ground. So if y'all don't mind, y'all will let me uh, do next month a part two on this topic, right? Yes. Yes. So anyway, let me bring out a point that I wanted to bring out. That uh, we're dealing with principles of obedience and disobedience. Remember a long time ago, y'all. A long time ago they told us this. That there was two brothers. God said there was two brothers. I love one and hate the other. Y'all ever remember that? Mm -hmm. Do you? Yeah. Yes. Once I take this out of the personality and I bring this into a principle, because we all know that God doesn't hate anybody, right or wrong. Right, right. But in the, in the book they said he loved one of us and hated the other one, right? Yeah. So we know it's impossible that God should lie. So what's the meaning of that? The two brothers is obedience and disobedience. Correct. Y'all heard? Right. That's the stories and the personality that I see going throughout all scriptures and everywhere else. Obedience and disobedience. What the 12 12 told us about that? The 12 and 12 said his drunkenness and his dissolution. Because it only used the word dissolution one time. He said his drunkenness and his dissolution are not caused by disobedience, I mean, to people in authority. But they are a direct result of its personal disobedience to spiritual principles. They are a direct result of his personal disobedience to spiritual principles. When did I first get in trouble? When I go back in my life, when I was being disobedient, right or wrong? Right. I'm talking about way back when. They always told me, do this, don't do that. Do this, don't do that. Right? Everywhere I went, they had rules. Right? Right or wrong? Right. So when, when did Adam get in trouble? You want to look at him? When he disobeyed. Right or wrong? Right. His birthday result is a, the principle will always be, is a, is a result of my personal disobedience to spiritual principles. That's why we needed rules. Because the only way a self-centered, selfish, self-centered alcoholic is going to follow any rules is if it benefits him. That's yeah, right. true. Y'all yeah. heard? Yeah. And before I close it, I'm going to come up with the other rule they came up with was rule number 62. Don't take yourself too damn seriously. Thank you all for letting me share. The facilitator for this workshop is always an honor to introduce my sponsor, Kenneth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kenneth. I'm a grateful recovered alcoholic. Hey, Kenneth. And this is a, a workshop that we had to continue from yeah. last month. Uh, this is part two of what we call it. Self-imposed crisis. A few simple rules. A few simple rules for a self-imposed crisis. Yeah. And we, there's so much information on this that we had to. Uh, come up with a part two on it. So for the benefit of the people who weren't here last week, I'm gonna just give a brief recap of what we had discussed. And uh, I'm hoping that most people got a, a big book in the 12 and 12 in order to keep us hoping they got pen and pad because we're gonna move through it. This is what we basically dealing with. I wrote this on the board, illness. Because the big book tells us that if you find that you can't quit drinking when you want to, you may be suffering from an illness which only a spiritual experience will come. Mm -hmm. And that illness, <laughs> we really need to look deeper at that illness to see exactly what it is we're dealing with. And so when we look in the dictionary, what we came up with was this. When you look up Webster's Dictionary, the, the definition of illness, other than just sickness or cold. So we have to go much further than a sickness or a cold. Am I right or wrong? Right. It says, first meaning is wickedness, unpleasantness, 
It comes from the word ill. Did you say wickedness? Wickedness. Like the wicked witch of the West. <laughs> wickedness. Unpleasantness. And it comes from this word, ill. And when we look up the word ill, what it means, not in good health, not normal or sound. That's one. Then, causing suffering or distress. Unfriendly, hostile. Involving difficulty or distress. Suffering, unfriendly, hostile, not suited to circumstances or not the ones that vanish. Unlucky. Attributing evil or an object or attributing evil or an objectional quality resulting from, accompanied by, or indicative of an evil or malevolent intention. Immoral. Vicious. That's the meaning of ill. Now they got some of us can actually identify with some of those descriptions. <laughs> those of us who just don't think we just mildly sick. But this illness that we suffer from and this ill this this all of this brought us to what's called a crisis. It that's what it brought us to. Now this is the meaning of crisis. <coughs> a time of intense difficulty, trouble or danger. <coughs> Catastrophe, calamity, emergency, disaster. I'm sorry, a time of <coughs> a time of intense difficulty, trouble, or danger, catastrophe, calamity, emergency, disaster, a time when a difficult or important decision must be made, critical point, decisive point, turning point. The turning point of a disease, now this is important, the turning point of a disease when an important change takes place, indicating recovery or death. And that's what happened to a lot of us? Yeah. Yes. Crushed, when the big book says, I think it's on page 53, when we became alcoholics, crushed by a self-imposed crisis, in which, which we could no longer postpone or evade, we had to fearlessly say the proposition that either God was everything or he was nothing. That's what the book tells us. We had reached that point. So this is what we're actually dealing with. All of these definitions included in this illness. And then the 12 and 12 tells us this. This is on page 24 to 12 and 12. They say under the lash of alcoholism, we are driven to AA and there we discover that there we discover the fatal nature of our situation. Under the last of alcoholism, we are driven to AA, and there, page 24, page 24 to 12 and 12, or here, we discover the fatal nature of our situation. It's suggesting that while I was out there, I didn't know the fatal nature of my situation. Because I came into the program and it's here we discovered the fatal nature of our situation. And when you look at it from that perspective, this is what we're dealing with. You got this word illness, y'all see that? Yes. Then it comes from the word ill, right? right? Which brings us to a crisis, right? right. Which is a self-imposed crisis. So what we discover when we come up in here is the fatal nature of our situation, which is this. What does that say? Yeah. Now what does it say? Oh. Right. The fatal nature of my situation. I will, I shall, and you shall too, if I so will it. Y'all heard that? No. <laughs> I'm suffering from a self-imposed crisis. I came in here and I found out that selfishness and self-centeredness 
with the root of all my trouble, right? Because I'm constantly trying to run the whole show. I'm trying, constantly trying to rearrange the life. So the fatal nature of my situation, my spiritual illness, is this. When we say the third step prayer, do I say, relieve me of the bondage of alcohol? No. Self. Relieve me of the bondage of what? Self. This is where the problem is. Now am I making sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so we discover the fatal nature of our illness, but it goes much further. They said, if that be the case, you may be suffering from an illness which only a spiritual experience will come. That means I'm suffering from a spiritual illness if only a spiritual uh, experience can conquer it. It's going to take spirit to fight spirit, right? right. Yeah, so if, I'm, if that's my situation, then I'm going to need a spiritual solution. A chemical solution to a spiritual problem won't do. Because that's what I've been trying all my life. With the alcohol, right? right. I'm uh, pouring these chemical uh, solutions to my spiritual problem, they never work. Now this word is conquer. They use that word. This is what we discussed. I'm giving a brief run now. That means to overcome and take control of a place or people by use of military force. One meaning. To defeat, get the better of worse, or bring someone to their knees. And then it says, successfully overcome a problem or weakness, get a grip on them. <coughs> successfully overcome a problem. Uh, and what, what do we do? We uh, join together. Uh, uh, what do you say? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength, and hope with each other. So they can solve their what? Common, Common problem. Common problem. So to successfully overcome, because they told us when the spiritual malady is overcome, we straighten out mentally and physically, right? Mm -hmm. So this is where the whole battle goes at. So when they talk about conquer, use the word conquer, they're implying war. Y'all familiar with that, right? Yes. yes. Right. The conquering hero. So they're talking about war, which brings us to the first page of the big book which was walk. Yeah. Yeah. On the very first word in the big book is walk on page one. Bill said walk people broke up. And Bill is right haphazardly. Every word in 164 pages is carefully organized and put together. And it's put there for a reason. Every single word. Especially in those small words. Now our illness, we mentioned we mentioned that we have a spiritual illness. So last month we talked, we touched briefly on this walk. And uh, they borrowed these principles we got from religion as well as medicine. So we talked about, we hit the walk. And I remember that, you know, there was a war in heaven a long time ago. And uh, Satan fought and his angels and Michael and his angels fought. And he lost and he took down a third of the heavens with him. So the way we looked at that was what they told us on page, I think it was page 18. They said, just like our illness, it's not confined to self alone. That's not what they're saying. That's, the book doesn't say that. I'm, I'm, I'm at little. But it affects and infects the lives of all whose lives touch the sufferers. Mm -hmm. For with it goes the annihilation of all things worthwhile in life. Fierce resentment. Uh, somebody got that on page 18? Yeah. yeah. Read it. So they say, for with it goes annihilation of all things worthwhile in life. Y'all see it? It engulfs all those who touch the sufferers. It brings misunderstanding, fierce resentment, financial insecurity, disgusted friends and employers, warped lives of blameless children, sad wives and parents. Anyone can increase the list. So I'm not, my illness is not confined to me alone. I take down a third of heaven's other people's peace with me, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. See, the alcoholic is like a tornado on page 82, roaring its way through the lives of others, right? Yeah. So my, I'm not, my illness is not just confined to me alone. This is what we discussed. Now, in order to bring uh, a person that's suffering like that, they got... We come up with this workshop called A Few Simple Rules. 
for a self-imposed crisis. Now on page 74, they're going to tell us one of the rules. The rule is, we should always be hard on ourselves. Okay. Page 74, in the big book. We should always be hard on ourselves, but considerate of others. Y'all hear that? Yeah. So that means I'm not beating myself up with a feather. We should always be hard on ourselves. Y'all know people how to just beat yourself with a feather. Y'all never heard that? What they're saying in the room. The rule is we should always be hard on ourselves and always considerate of others. On page 62. They don't call it a rule, but one of the things they said, the first thing we had to do was quit playing God. Y'all yeah. remember that? Yeah. On page 90, in the big book it said, our rule is not to avoid a place where there is drinking, if we have a legitimate reason for being there. That's one of the rules. We, we come up to a point in our recovery that I'm no longer hiding from people who drink it or partying if I have a legitimate reason for being there. <laughs> and, we have, and I have to make sure that not, I'm not trying to steal a little vicarious pleasure. <laughs> Which I didn't understand what vicarious pleasure was. Did y'all? No. no. Alright, vicarious pleasure. <laughs> Anybody in here ever watch a triple X rated movie? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody? Oh. Yeah. Whether you did it accidentally or, you know, a lot of us might have watched it accidentally. That's how I watched it. Yeah, or some of us just don't, just don't get honest in here. You know, but while I'm watching the triple X rated movie, the people on the movie, they say, oh, ah, ah. They have a pleasure time, right? But since I'm not there, I'm stealing vicarious pleasure and watching that pleasure. You heard? <laughs> so that's what that's what we're talking about. I'm stealing a feeling. So I, I ain't going to the place so I can watch you drink so I can get a feeling from it. You heard what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That's what it's talking about. You know, sometimes we have to use grown up language. Y'all understand what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. The book said when speaking to the pe these people about our uh, spiritual matters, one must use everyday language, right? Yeah. So, we ain't, we're not trying to be vulgar. No. We're trying to make sure that the point gets home because a lot of us are working with other people, alcoholics, and taking people to the steps. And this will help us to be better able and better prepared, prepared to show and help the newcomer, right? Because right. our purpose is to produce sponsors rather than just sponsees. That's right or wrong? Right. That's right. So uh, that's the whole purpose of this workshop. Page 125 in the big book tells us at the beginning of recovery. Y'all gonna get it? At the beginning of recovery, a man will take as a rule one of two directions. Where are you? On page 125. That's why I want people to bring a notepad and a pen. And a pen and a pen. On, you, you'll find it. It's there. But in the meantime, we mark the page. We mark the page. Mark the page. Mark the page. 125. Yeah, because they got a lot to present. All right? On page, I have a lot to... Uh, we want to get it presented because I don't want to have to go into a part three. Y'all heard? On page 125, the big book says, at the beginning of recovery, a man will take as a rule one of two directions. One is to go all out trying to straighten out his back problems. That means trying to get his money back, his material back, his financial situation straight. Either he's going to go all out that way, or he's going to start working with us. He's going to work with others to the point where sometimes his wife said, Why are you always spending time with them people? Uh, <laughs> ain't y'all in the experience of that? Yes. Why you got to be here all, over there all the time, right? As a rule, he's going to take one of them. And they say, We, they strongly suggest that he takes the way of working with others first before he starts trying to straighten out his financial uh, 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 situation. Want to know one of the reasons why that is? 
Because in the third step, they told me, yes. we had a new employee uh -huh. yeah. with a capital to E in the third step. So I'm no longer unemployed. Right? <laughs> right? If right. I'm operating on the state principle, I'm no longer unemployed. I have a new employer and being all powerful, he provided what we needed. If we kept close to him and performed his work well, right? Yeah. So if I start going go and do Mr. McGillicuddy's work and I'm neglecting God's work, which is that I help another suffering individual, then I ask God in the third step in my contract prayer, take away my difficulties, that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help, right? right. So I'm going to neglect that. It's doing God's work and run about doing my physical work. Right? Mm -hmm. I should be about my father's business first. Am I right or wrong? You're right. Alright, so what happens is the person who does that, they go all out after the physical and the material yep. and then relapse. Yep. Because once I get the physical and the material, I'm not spiritually equipped to handle it. It will handle me. That's right. Mm -hmm. yep. That's like right. some people are like, like, uh, like I get a brand new car. Most of y'all bought cars at one time or another, right? Yes. Yes. And you see a friend of yours, and a friend sees the car, and he asks you, is that you? I tell him, no, that's a car. This is me standing here. <laughs> 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 Y'all have experienced that? Yes. yes. Alright, page 124 to 12 and 12. Another rule. We talk about a few simple rules. We no longer strive to dominate or rule those about us in order to gain self importance I'm going to read that again. We no longer strive to dominate or rule those about us in order to gain what important? Self-imposed. Self Self Crushed by our self-imposed crisis. We strive, y'all know how we did it, we ruled everything. Yep. <laughs> now the book also mentions other rules. Because these are positive rules. But it mentions other rules. In the 12 and 12 on, the page, on page 139. In the 12 and 12 on page 139, he said that one time, he said every AA group had membership rules. Y'all heard that? Mm -hmm. On page 100, that, that every AA group had membership rules. He can do this, he can't do that, he can't do that. Membership rules. On page 148 in the 12 and 12, to ensure foolproof continuous operation. That's at one group. 61 rules and regulations were adopted. I would say, Bill said to ensure, no, this is what Bill said, to ensure foolproof continuous operation. I would say to ensure foolproof continuous cooperation. <coughs> But Bill said operate for the group to run. 61 rules and regulations were adopted. Page 140 in the 12 and 12 says this. If all those rules had been in effect everywhere, nobody could have possibly joined AA at all. So great was the sum of our anxiety and fear. They were so afraid when they first started, of letting darkies in, addicts in, anybody, women in. They didn't even want the women in there. They were so afraid. Y'all hear that? So, so they came up with all these rules. Now to forward to the second edition on page 19, that's Roman numeral X1X, XIX. They say, though none of these principles, they're talking about the tradition now, though none of these principles had the force of rules or laws, they had become so widely accepted by 1950 that they were conferred by our first international conference held at Cleveland. Talking about the traditions. 
They, were, they didn't have the force of rules or laws, but they, they was widely accepted. They said none of these principles, those 12 traditions are 12 principles. Just like the 12 steps are principles, the traditions are also principles. That's what they're telling us that. Some rules, you all, just don't work with us. Now let me write this down. I'm willing to guarantee that most people that's sitting in this room right now, including the one that's standing up, he did not like rules. When I was a child, the grades that they should have graded me on, they didn't. I got uh, E's in mathematics, English, reading, writing. E's and D's, E's and all, which y'all call A's and B's, right? <laughs> y'all call, because I'm from out New Orleans, so they, they had to give us E's for excellence, G for good. So here they got A's and B's, right? Mm -hmm. So I made all that on my report card, but that little small right fails to follow instructions. <laughs> does not work well with us. Did y'all get that? Too? <laughs> you know, does not. They never graded me on that. That's what they should have been graded. Cause my conduct was always F. Mm. Y'all know what F means? Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I should not have been allowed to pass with that. So I continued that negative contact throughout my life. They never graded me on that, which was most important though. So rules. This. R-U-L-E-S. Rules. One is the meaning of it. One of the meanings of it. One of a set of explicit <coughs> or understood regulations or principles governing conduct within a particular activity or sphere or area. Another meaning is control of or dominion over an area or people. To exercise ultimate power or authority over an area and its people. Now, when I was a child, I was told and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of you always told the same thing. That when God created man, he blessed them. And told them multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Do y'all remember that? Yeah. <laughs> My nature is to run stuff. <laughs> I was created to rule. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Okay. This is not abnormal. It, it becomes abnormal when I ain't got the ruler ruling over my decisions. Y'all heard me? Yeah. When I don't have God as the proper focus in my life, that means that I'm I don't see no other God but me. Y'all hear what I'm saying? That's because right. it's my very nature to run stuff. That's right. That's where this is coming from. You know, uh, Bill wrote a he didn't write the book, but he in in the big book, the big book only names one other book. It doesn't name any other book but one book. And that's the Varieties of Religious Experience by William James. Y'all familiar with that? Yeah. When you open up that book, if you get that book and you open it, you're going to see what the real name of that book is. A Study in Human Nature. Bill carried that book with him everywhere he went. So it's the nature of the human being to run stuff, rule stuff, because that's what he is born to do. But it's, it runs amok when I don't have God ruling in my life, right? Oh, yeah. And that's what brings me to this owl, this illness, suffering from a, 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 a self-imposed crisis 
Because by me running the show, all, without God, all I'm doing is causing trouble everywhere. Yeah. That's right. yeah. 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 You know, I self-destruct. You know, didn't he say a long time ago, do this and live? Do that and die, right? Mm -hmm. So, I'm, my, my nature is to rule. So I'm going to rule with everything that I see. Uh, and if it ain't doing what I wanted to do, then it's in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about y'all, but the, 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 yeah. a lot of us are just like that. Yeah, yeah. Now the book don't only just talk about rules. The doctor was very, very smart. This, this, it also mentions this. Let me write this down. The doctor told us, on the other hand, as strange as this may seem to those who do not understand, the same person who seems doomed suddenly finds himself easily able to control his desire for alcohol. The only requirement necessary being that re required to follow a few simple rules, right? Yes. right. Y'all remember that? Yeah. yeah. Something like that, he said. All right. That's what he told us when we come in here. After we get in here, then start the book, the big book starts up. <laughs> It don't just talk about rules. It starts talking about requirements. Mm. Right? Right. Y'all done read that? The first requirement? Y'all done heard that, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. It starts talking about suggestions. Right? Mm -hmm. Rules, requirements, suggestions. Then they start talking about must. Right or wrong? Right. Right. Requirements is mentioned twice. Rules is mentioned eight times in the big book and the 12 and 12 together. Y'all got that? Mm -hmm. Suggestions is mentioned 17 times in the big book and the 12 and 12 together. Must is mentioned 57 times. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all see that? Yeah. <laughs> Now, all of that's for a reason. That's not accidental. All that's for a reason. So, to get me in here, and you don't make it complicated, you just tell me I just got to follow a few simple rules. <laughs> <laughs> I come up here later on, y'all, I done found out all this. They say, when I come up here, I'm going to find out the I'm going to learn the fatal nature of my situation, right? That's right. So that means I'm going to have to stay in here. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm going to find out that once I get in here, I ain't got no business going out, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> and and that, that means literally going out. Now people say you went out. <laughs> so I ain't got no business going out. Now, the first requirement, we be convinced that any life run on self-will can hardly be a success, right? Yeah. Any, any life, not just the alcoholic life, any life run on self-will because any life didn't give itself life. That's right. Right? Right. right. Any life had to be given life by the life giver. Mm -hmm. And when the life giver gives life, then, the, then, then they got rules and regulations that govern that life. That's right. And once I violate the rules and the regulations that govern that life, what happens? I mean, I can get uh, buy a fan at the store. They got rules that govern that. 
Okay. I can buy a stove at the store. They got rules that come in that, right? The manufacturer uh, is the one that produces the rules, right? And if I operate according to the manufacturer's rules, then everything operates smoothly. <laughs> that's, what, that's one of the reasons why they told us that when we got to the 10th step, they told us that our next function, function now, understand the meaning of this word, function. Our next function is to grow and understand it and expect it. The word function means the operation of a thing in the manner for which it was intended. When I, was, when I came here, I, had, I was intended, God intended me to follow His rules. That's what I was doing when I was born. Right? Breathing. Looking for that breast. Today I still look for breath, but it's chicken breath. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was doing. Swallowing milk. You know, I, I obeyed God completely. <laughs> until I start moving around and seeing things. Yep. And doing things. Then I start, you know. Well. I had rules then. Mom said, do this and don't do that. Do this and don't do that, right? Mm -hmm. And when I did opposite, oh, I always got a whip it. Yeah. When I did good, they said, well done, right? Mm -hmm. So that we come up here and we've got rules, requirements, and suggestions and much. Now, why so? One of the requirements, the, the first requirement is that we be convinced. But they got requirement also. Requirements also on page 13 in the big book. This is what uh, Bill says Belief in the power of God, plus enough willingness, honesty, and humility to establish and maintain a new order of things were the essential requirements. Right? Y'all see that? Okay, that's what it says. On page 50 in the big book, he says this. Here are thousands of men and women, worldly indeed. They flatly declare that since they have come to believe in a power greater than themselves, to take a certain attitude toward that power, and to do certain simple things, there has been a revolutionary change in their way of living and thinking. In the face of collapse and despair, in the face of the total failure of their human resources, they found that a new power, peace, happiness, and sense of direction flowed into them. This happened soon after they wholeheartedly met a few simple requirements. Y'all hear that? Yeah. Requirement is mentioned in six different places. We are told that the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking six times. They mention that six times. Those other two requirements is the one I just finished reading. Here's another requirement. That was for us. Before we come in. Page 120 of the 12 and 12. This is what it says. Y'all notice, do you all notice that the majority of what I'm saying is largely from the book? Y'all paying attention to that? Yes. yes. All right, so, the, you know, he says, where the possession of money and material things was concerned, our outlook underwent the same revolutionary change. With a few exceptions, all of us had been spendthrifts. Y'all know what a spendthrift is? No. No. Y'all yeah. do know what a spendthrift is? No. That's a person that just throws money everywhere. He's spending it all kinds of ways. Just and ain't giving it no second thought. I'm just going to the hood and scope. I just finished scoring, I'm going to score again. I'm going over here buying some liquor, I'm buying this, I'm having this party. A spendthrift. That's right. Yep. Yeah. You know, a spendthrift, the old folks used to say that the spendthrift was the brother of the devil. <laughs> Y'all hear me? They got an old saying that's saying that a spendthrift is the brother of the devil. And he said, with few exceptions, all of us, 
Now I know some of y'all, some of you all, <laughs> may be the exception to the rule. Mm -hmm. But it says, <laughs> we threw money about in every direction with the purpose of pleasing ourselves and, in, and impressing other people. In our drinking time, we acted as if the money supply was inexhaustible. <laughs> Though between binges or spree, we sometimes go to the other extreme and become almost miserly. Y'all know what miserly means, right? Yes. <laughs> Without realizing it, we were just accumulating funds for the next spree. Money was the symbol of pleasure and self-importance. When our drinking had become much worse, Money was only an urgent requirement <coughs> which could supply us with the next drink. And for the dope that is snuck in here, the next hit. <laughs> <laughs> and the temporary comfort of ob oblivion it brought. Can y'all, uh, y'all can, y'all can hang with that? Y'all can see what yeah. yes. he said? Yeah. All right. All right. Now, nah. We come to this part. You see these rules, these requirements, suggestions, and the must. All of this is done for another aspect that the big book talks about. And it calls it this. Can y'all read that? Demand. Yeah. Demand. Demand. Y'all can read it? Yeah. Or should I put it in black? <laughs> no. Alright. Demands. We talk about rules, requirements, suggestions, must. All of this happened because of this. Our demand. Y'all heard? Yeah. Now see the big book demands, the program has a demand also. The program's demand will keep us from drinking. Y'all heard? They're constitutionally incapable of uh, uh, <coughs> grasping and developing a manner of living which demands rigorous honesty, right? right? So that demand will keep us from drinking. But they got these other demands. The word demands is mentioned 21 times. Mostly negative. <laughs> y'all, y'all? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so we're not, we know what word we're dealing with. Now this is a note that I made. This is my personal note that I looked at. I said, the average person that lives a life by making demands on other people as if it's his right, even making demands on God, will not accept to live by rules, requirements, or suggestions, or must, unless the rules or requirements benefit him. Y'all got that? That's right. That's the way I was. If the rule benefits me, that's right. If the requirement benefits me, Right. If the must benefit me, yes. I'm perfectly willing to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the type of individual that's selfish and self-centered in the extreme. Yeah. As Dale Carnegie, I don't know if y'all ever heard of Dale Carnegie. Mm -hmm. Carnegie? Yeah, Dale Carnegie. Yeah. Dale Carnegie, mm -hmm. you, know, I, you know how I'm always trying to get somebody to do what I want them to do? Oh, yeah. There's only one way on this planet to get another person to do what you want them to do. Ain't but one way to do that. And that's to get them to want to do it. Mm -hmm. You heard? Yes. That's the only way I'm going to get another person to do what I want them to do by getting them to want to do it. Mm -hmm. Well now, you know, like, like the wife can tell them, man, well, if you come home early, 
Friday night. And I'm more than available. <laughs> Y'all hear me? Yeah. The only way to get a person to do what you want them to do is to get them to want to do it. So the wisdom see the, the wise woman, I'm going to share something with y'all, the wise woman will feed a man an idea or a thought and make him think he came up with it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then when he come up with it, she said, oh, baby, that's, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, they used to say, well, let me get back on, on point. Yeah. Okay. We're talking about the man, right? Right. <laughs> First, we had to see that alcohol now become the rapacious creditor, bled us of the self of all self sufficiency, all self sufficiency, and all will to resist its demand. Page twenty eight, and some of us, even seeing that there will be those who have drifted into indifference. Those filled with self-sufficiency who have cut themselves off. Those who have become prejudiced against religion. And those who are downright defiant because God has failed to meet their demands. Right. Mm -hmm. You heard? Yeah. Yeah. Page 52 in the 12 and 12. I had to ask if these perplexities besettled me because of selfish and unreasonable demands. Let me write this down. Tell me if y'all can see this now. Y'all see it? Yeah. Because of selfish and unreasonable demand. Twelve and twelve, page fifty-three. They say we found if we lean too heavily on people, they will sooner or later fail us, for they are humans too, and cannot possibly meet our incessant demands. In other words, incessant. Y'all see that? This is relating to us. Those are the ones that's real alcoholic. Y'all can y'all identify with that? Because yes. some people will say, well, that don't refer to me. <laughs> the ones who haven't taken inventory yet. Uh, They'll say that. <laughs> page. We got the uh, what 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 page that is told y'all about that? 53. 53. 53. All right. Page 76. We found therefore. 12 and 12. We found, therefore, no peace was to be had unless we could find a means of reducing these demands. Page 49 in the 12 and 12. Unreasonable fear that our instincts will not be satisfied drives us to covet the possession of others, to lust for sex and power, to become angry when our instinctive demands are threatened. To be envious when the ambitions of others seem to be realized while ours are not. Instinctive. Another word. Instinctive. Almost sound like stink. Because it does stink. It's unreasonable, incessant, instinctive. These are the way he describes our demands. Y'all paying attention to this? Yes. yes. He said, well, thank you, man. He said, uh, what 
what page I just told you all that was on? 49. 49? Okay. Page 115 in the 12 and 12. We had refused to learn the very hard lesson that over-dependence upon people is unsuccessful because all people are fallible and even the best of them will sometimes let us down, especially when our demands for attention become unreasonable. Page 116 of the 12 and 12. We saw that we would need to give constantly of ourselves without demands for repayment. I'm going to have to freely give what's been freely given to me. Am I right or wrong? That's right. Page 115 of the 12 and 12. We blame them. Didn't we come up here blaming them? Oh, you know what? Being quite unable to see that our unreasonable demands had been the cause. <coughs> our unreasonable demands had been the cause. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Had been the cause. Our, we blame them when we fail to see that our unreasonable demands had been the cause. We fail to see that. Demands made upon other people for too much attention, protection, and love can only invite domination and or revulsion in the protectors themselves. Two emotions quite as unhealthy as the demands would evoke them. 12 and 12, page 109. This is indeed the kind of living that actually demands nothing. Once we get in here, right? We give and give and we don't demand nothing, right? Because our reward comes from God. We're going to get it, right or wrong? Right. You know, we're going to, and they got an old saying long time ago, and I, I, I had a trouble figuring this out. Because I was in a, a juvenile penitentiary, right? Mm -hmm. And it forced me to go to church every Sunday and every <coughs> Wednesday. And I remember all the songs, but I don't remember nothing the preacher said. <laughs> One of the songs that they used to sing, Every time, right before they pass the basket, y'all know what I mean by pass the basket? <laughs> was this. You can't be God giving, no matter how you try. That's what you say. <laughs> and they always sung that right before they passed the basket. Yeah. So I took it that they were trying to make me feel guilty <laughs> if I didn't put nothing in the basket. <laughs> y'all hear me? Yes. 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 So when I came up with the alcoholics anonymous, and I recovered, then I found out the real meaning of that. Uh -huh. To give, to give, to give, and you can't be God given. Give with no demand or nothing in return. I found out the meaning of that in here. Mm -hmm. You can't be God given no matter how hard you try. <laughs> the, uh, the more you give, the more He gives to you. Y'all remember the song? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I found out the meaning of that in here. And, and, and these wasn't even. Church people. <laughs> but they're the ones taught me the meaning of it. A lot of them had experience in church, but you know, they wasn't up here, you know, a whole in religious meetings. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. But I found out the real meaning of it from them. Big book, page 58. They are naturally incapable of grasping and developing a manner of living which demands rigorous honesty. We mentioned that before, which demands rigorous honesty. It don't request. This program demands rigorous honesty. That's right. They're naturally incapable of grasping and developing. Two things. It's one thing to grasp it intellectually. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to develop it and live it. It's two things. Constitutionally incapable. Page, big book, page 122. We find the more one member of the family. This is when I get to the family now. We find that the more one member of the family demands that the others concede to him, the more resentful they become. <laughs> Y'all heard that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, because some of us go back to family members and they want all my time. The hell with it. The heck with their age. Y'all see what I'm saying? So it, it, it invites re it resentments. Because we ain't the only one doing no demands. The alcoholic is not the only one that demands things. Right. All people do the same thing. That's right. The only thing is we have a program. Right or wrong? Right. right. We discover on page 104, 
12 and 12, we discover that we do receive guidance for our lives to just about the extent that we stop making demands upon God to give it to us on order and on our terms. Y'all heard? Y'all yeah. ever heard? Even preachers say, right now, Lord, right now, that God can't hear. Yeah. Y'all heard? Come on, Jim. God, you know, I'm demanding that he, he, uh, he do this now, now. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 what right do I have? I have no right. Hey, don't you? <laughs> 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 you know, 1212 page 49. Pride uh -oh. lures us into making demands upon ourselves or upon others which cannot be met without perverting, perverting. Some of y'all familiar with that word? No. Yes. <laughs> without perverting or misusing our God-given instincts. 12 and 12, page 76. We now clearly see that we have been making unreasonable demands upon ourselves, upon others, and upon God. 12 and 12, page 93. We can try to stop making unreasonable demands upon those we love. 12 and 12, page 76. Living upon a basis of unsatisfied demands, we were in a state of continual disturbance and frustration. When I'm living upon that basis of unsatisfied demands, I'm in a state of continual disturbance and frustration. There is no peace. The book mentions not just rules, like I said, but requirements, suggestions, and must and demands. And now, basically, we can see why. What time? One o'clock. One o'clock? Let me see what I can add to this. And uh, I, what I wanted to do, I'm glad you all allowed me to do it. I had a lot of information because they got people up here that work with us. Uh, didn't we get the, some necessary information that we got, go to some pages yeah. Yeah. and help yeah. some newcomers yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that yeah. suffer from these things yes. and show them what they're really suffering from? Yes. That's the purpose of this. That's the purpose of the workshop. This, this word, incessant. Let me show you what our demands are. You know, the first one is unreasonable. Pardon me. When I'm making these unreasonable demands, the meaning of that word, unreasonable, is this. Not guided by or based on good sense. <laughs> not rational, not fair or acceptable. Not based on using good judgment. These are the kind of demands I'm making. Now, he also mentioned incessant demands, right? Y'all know what incessant means? No. Answer me. No. 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 That's why we come to big book studies, and that's why, <laughs> to me, I never finished eighth grade. So you know I didn't know what the heck it was talking about, right? right. So I had to come up here and get me a dictionary, a couple of them. Incessant of something regarded as unpleasant, not only is it unpleasant, unpleasant but it's continuing without pause or interruption, <laughs> ceaseless, <laughs> constant, endless. Y'all hear me? <laughs> That's the kind of demands I'm making. An instinctive demand. Y'all know what that means? No, no. Instinctive no. means relating to or prompted by instinct. Apparently unconscious or automatic. Y'all ever seen a dog in heat when he hit another dog? Oh, yeah. You know? Uh, you ever seen that? Uh, yes, sir. He don't care if President Bush looking and standing there. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all yeah. hear me? Yeah. That's the way we operate, y'all, under the instinctive demands. Right. You know, I'm, I'm making these instinctive <laughs> demands and, uh, based upon my pride, my sex, my, and I, I've been doing this, and it's brought other people destruction and hell and misery. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. Not only me, I take down a third of the heavens with me. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I'm, like I said, I'm glad you all gave me a chance to get this out because I was feeling as though, you know, I, I had started something 
and didn't finish it. Now, any of y'all that was started something and didn't finish, people just don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some people say, don't, don't start what you can't finish. You ever heard that? Yeah. All right. They been meaning that too. But uh, I'm thankful uh, to all of you all, and for the people that's not here, we're going to have a tape, a CD on this. This whole thing, if you want to get a CD, it'll be available next month. Next month we'll have a different topic. I think we've covered enough ground for now. So uh, we're going to have, we have the topic, I mean uh, the CD from last month here. The CDs are not for sale. If you want to uh, make a, a, a donation, you can. Did anybody bring food? Did anybody bring food to this workshop? Raise your hand so we can see you. Give them a hand, y'all. No. Raise your hand. Here. And uh, that's Jane's mug right there. Raise your hand. Uh, that's the one that been your problems and whatnot. Thank you very, very much. So we gotta, we're going to act. And Susan, I'm telling y'all, I don't know what I'd do with her, without her. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, without, without her, I, I don't think we would have been doing these workshops at all. She's the whole power behind the room, behind the scenes. But, but the workshop, all I am is a mouthpiece. A front man. Right there? That's all I am. So, <laughs> we're going to say, y'all sit right where you're at and join me in a moment of silence, followed by the serenity prayer. God, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Thank you all very, very much. Now, go eat. Thank you.